2017, we're just 16 days away from the general election. A very good afternoon. Many thanks for joining us here at this hour. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. Of course, this is the campaign edition of Choice 2017. And it's here that we're going to discuss nothing else but politics. And uh, it's here, of course, we're going to, of course, give it to you, you know, the rallies happening uh, as they happen on the ground. And it's here that we're going to uh, separate facts from uh, fiction. Now, on the campaign trail uh, this afternoon, President Uhuru Kenyatta is in the northern Kenya county of Mandera. Uh, that is where we're getting reports that he is uh, currently addressing his uh, supporters there. We're going to link up with the reporter Morimi Mwangi shortly. And thereafter, the president is going straight to uh, the neighboring Wajir uh, county. And on the other hand, uh, Raila Odinga, that is Nasser's presidential candidate, uh, is in Lamu county. Francis Otomo is going to tell us uh, more on uh, that. And yesterday on the campaign trail, the Jubilee leadership under President Uhuru Kenyatta were in Nairobi. Of course, Nairobi is another very interesting county with the highest number of registered voters. And uh, he did say, you know, in his uh, rally there, he did, you know, made some very interesting uh, announcement. Let's listen into uh, what some of the leaders had to say yesterday. Ata and his deputy William Ruto traversed Dagoretti South, Kasarani, Mbakasi East and West constituencies. <laughs> dual persuading residents to bank their votes in the jubilee basket during the august 8th polls But in a bare knuckled attack on city independent candidates supporting his presidential bid, Kenyatta rooted for Senator Mike Sonko's election as governor, discrediting gubernatorial candidate Peter Kenneth as a potential spoiler for the ruling party towards and sitting city governor Dr. Ivan Skidero. President Kenyatta's city campaign comes only a week after the Raila Odinga led National Super Alliance double tour of the city in the hunt for votes. In 2013, Odinga beat Kenyatta in the city, garnering 49% of the presidential vote, compared to the president's 47% share of the Nairobi votes. But the president's former TNA party scooped 10 parliamentary seats, the senatorship and the woman representative, compared to the Odinga-led ODM party's seven city MPs and the governorship. <laughs> But the Jubilee leaders vowed to paint the city red in August, demanding for nothing short of the six-piece Jubilee suit in the poll. After staking a claim to the over 2 million votes in the city, the head of state now proceeds to Mandera and Wajir counties as the race to state house enters the home stretch. Muremi Mwangi Kichia News in Nairobi.
Well, that is a Jubilee earlier on. That is yesterday. They were in Nairobi. And there's a very interesting announcement there that came from the head of state. And it is a message that might as well turn out to be a major blow to the gubernatorial ambition uh, by one of the candidates there, Peter Kenneth. Of course, we're going to uh, analyze that for you. But for now, as I've already told you, NAS, on the other hand, are at the coast and they're expected to be in Lamu today. Now, just, just to tell us more on what to expect uh, from uh, Raila Odinga's brigade there uh, at the coast, to be specific, in Lamu. Now, we're now joined by our reporter, Francis uh, Ontomwa, who is uh, at the coast. Good afternoon, uh, Francis. And what is uh, NASA's agenda this time round at the coast? Uh, well, so far, we are broadcasting from Mombasa, but closely following events in Lamu County. And right now, we, uh, Raila Odinga has just wrapped up his tour of Ahola. He has been speaking to residents there, of course, all in a bit to try and convince the residents of our coast region entirely to vote uh, for Jubilee. It has been an action-packed day for, to, for, for NASA, rather. Uh, it has been an action-packed day, actually, for Raila Odinga with his, uh, with his team of uh, principals. He has been in Lahola uh, together with Kalonzo Musio. Moses Muda, Mos, Musalia Mudavadi, Moses Otangula, and a host of other leaders from uh, the coast region here, all in a bit to try and drum up support for Raila Odinga's presidential bid come August uh, 8th. Uh, from Hola, the entourage, of course, heads to Lamu County, where he's expected to also address uh, a rally there and uh, a schedule, and also uh, coupled by a shed, uh, some scheduled stopovers at different places in Lamu County. And all, of course, uh, it's to try and see whether they can be able to really convince uh, the coast region to. To, to, to support them uh, close to what they did in the last election, cost being an important place uh, in, the, in the presidential mathematics. That is why you've seen Jubilee and NASA all uh, laying focus down here in the coast region. Last week, Huru Kenyatta was in the coast region, specifically in Lamu County, and of course he spoke to residents there. And today it is the time of Raila Odinga to try and go and uh, sort of scuttle what was planted there by the Jubilee, uh, by the Jubilee party. Uh, important... Uh, this particular juncture is to look at some of the issues that will be merging in the in the in the in the Raila Odinga's visit in the coast region, and it ha and top among them has to be the question of uh, insecurity. Security has been a top issue in Lamu County, Northern Lamu and Lamu West, particularly being the most volatile areas. Last week, the head of state said that he had launched a war against the the, the, the Al Shabaab insurgents, and this time around. Uh, it is interesting, actually, to hear what the opposition will have to say on the same subject, uh, given that they have uh, incessantly actually said that they have an alternative uh, way of doing things on how to end uh, the question of insecurity. Security, Yusuf, being an important issue as we head to the elections, uh, not once but we've, uh, but several we've had uh, analysts say that it may also affect voter turnout uh, should uh, the question of uh, insecurity not be handled in the best way possible. Already there are a number of people leaving parts of uh, Boni Forest, uh, of course, in fear of uh, attacks, and that is why we, we, it is actually important really to hear uh, what these top leaders have to say in terms of as regards the question of security. Land is another emotive issue, Yusuf, that has to emerge uh, in the discussions in Lamu County. And Raila Odinga will be laying uh, on the table to the residents of Lamu and telling them what he has, them, what agenda he has to solve historical land injustices. He has heavily actually said that uh, they will be relying more on the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission's report to handle land issues in the country. Of course, accusing Jubilee that they have only been scratching the surface as regards the question of tackling the land question in Kenya. Interesting discussion Yusuf, therefore, to, to of course to look forward to. Uh, the, uh, of course, we are we, we have reports that residents have already started thronging most of those stopovers where uh, Ray Lodinga will be passing. Of course, all to try and catch glimpse of uh, Ray Lodinga and hear uh, the agenda that he has for the people of Lamu and Tana, and Tana River counties. Yusuf. Many thanks, Francis, for that. Of course, it is a very busy day, politically speaking, and we are right here to make sure that our viewers don't miss anything as far as the campaign trail is concerned. Many thanks, Francis. Once again, we're going to link up with you later and give us uh, some, you know, some sort of an update from that rally where NASA leaders are expected at the coast. Actually, they are in Lamu, and top on the agenda will be issues to do with insecurity uh, there. Remember... At this hour, this moment, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his Jubilee Brigade are in northern Kenya, to be specific, in Mandera County. 
uh, were, you know, supporters of both Jubilee and the Economic Frontier Party, another party that is affiliated to Jubilee, uh, going to share a podium there for the first time. It will be very interesting because both of them have two key candidates for the governor's uh, position as well as all the other uh, seats. But for now, in studio, together with our political analyst here, one is John Kagushia. He is a political analyst, and we expect uh, lawyer Kakai Kessinj actually is here with us in the studio, is going to join us uh, shortly to make sense out of all uh, these developments today. Let me begin with Nairobi, before mm. we even talk about Northern Kenya and Lamu. Yeah. You've seen the announcement there by the head of state, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, asking Peter Kenneth, that is one of the independent candidates, yeah. to step down. That is a blow to the PK's uh, campaign team. Yeah, PK came as a preferred candidate when he started his campaigns in Nairobi. And uh, if you can remember, there's a time he made a statement that uh, he was yet to make a choice as to where he would run. Mm -hmm. At that time, he was talking about Moranga, he was talking about Nairobi, oh. and he was referring to Nakuru. And at that time, I questioned the wisdom of um, kind of saying, I'm, I'm trying to choose where I, I'm, I'm going to run. Uh, because when you have less than one year to the mm -hmm. general election, mm -hmm. you can be... Uh, coming like the Messiah is uh, like uh, you are the person who is going to uh, come and clear all the problems that yeah. people have, and then you have not even decided exactly where you want to run. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, when he made his decision to run in Nairobi, it was too late, mm -hmm. and uh, we had uh, a team called Team Nairobi, which was led by Sonko, which was very forceful in Nairobi. You can mm -hmm. remember uh, we had Sonko, we had uh, Wanjiru, uh, Margaret, and uh, we had uh, Waweru also, and. Uh, uh, they also had Asakaja and uh, Richard Shebesh and a few other people. They, they, they had uh, that uh, strong team in uh, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Then this one came as Team Fresh, uh, mm -hmm. Team for Change. And uh, uh, eventually this team was trounced uh, because even though it uh, was getting a lot of support from some of the MPs like Maina Kamanda yeah. and the rest, mm -hmm. uh, they could not really sink, especially because Peter Kenneth was very, very new in Nairobi politics and, and, at that point. And some of the MPs have already yeah. lost during the nominations. So are you Indeed. trying to say that, you know, the political hibernation by Peter Kenneth? Yeah, because the, from 2013, he was never seen around. He was never that seen around. That came to his disadvantage. Uh, that is it. And you see, up to the very last minute, he was mm -hmm. still saying he has not made a decision as to where he's going to vie. Yeah. And uh, by the time now he was coming, people had already claimed and they declared their own uh, intention to vie in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was very difficult for him to come and break through. Peter Kenneth comes, at, uh, comes out as a person who is admired by many people and many uh, Nairobians, even Kenyans. They like him and they think he's a, he's a performer, but he has this uh, inability to make the right decisions at mm -hmm. the right time. But he, he keeps miscalculating, uh -huh. and for that reason, he keeps sinking lower and lower. You remember one time uh, uh, Kidero was actually asking him, now you are vying as a presidential candidate, mm -hmm. uh, now you have stepped down to a governor, are you then going to step down as an MCA next time? And all but, this is to show that he has been miscalculating. But John, the question is, yes. why did the president make the announcement now? Uh, Nairobi is a very, very crucial county uh, to him and to any political player, major political player in the country. Yeah. And uh, this is not a place that you want to second guess. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, the president can second guess in other areas, especially his stronghold. But this is uh, a battlefield. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a swing vote. Uh, this is an area where... It's so important to any uh, political divide. You remember this is also the capital. This is where they want to take the position of the governor, I mean the governor position. And once the president takes the governor position in Nairobi, then it becomes very easy to uh, run his government in the city. Uh, you remember all along there was some kind of truce between mm -hmm. the president and Kidero, which was good because it helped them to work together. Unlike the hostility we could see between the presidency and other gub uh, gubernatorial um, or other governors in other areas. So he would prefer to have a candidate who is uh, uh, direct uh, on his phone call, is on his P dial, that he can call him and he can call City Hall and things happen. But then you remember, if Peter Kenneth uh, continues with his bid, he's likely to get a number of votes mm -hmm. from uh, Jubilee uh, supporters. Yeah. Uh, I, in my opinion, I do not think that he will get so many votes as mm -hmm. to upset Sonko's bid. Mm -hmm. But even that 
little support that he's likely to get from the Jubilee supporters. Yeah. The president doesn't want to, to actually, second guess. Actually, critics are saying, you know, this is a man who gathered about 70,000 plus voters during the nominations, and prospects are he might double the number come uh, August, August 8th. No. So does the president and the Jubilee team feel threatened by the presence of... Of Peter Kenneth? It is not possible for Peter Kenneth to get anything more than 50,000. Mm -hmm. uh, last time, Jim Nambaru, who was vying alongside YT, to got 52,000 votes. Uh, it would be difficult for Peter Kenneth to get uh, 52,000 votes that uh, Jim Nambaru got then. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as you can see now, the uh, competition is much, much higher. And uh, you know, Sonko is also a little bit more likable. He has endeared himself a little bit more to Nairobians mm -hmm. than the way uh, Babayao had done at that time. Yeah. In fact, when for him he was accused to be a stone thrower, he was he did not really uh, wither that uh, negative publicity mm -hmm. or that negative branding. But for Sonko, he seems to to, to just have this uh, likable image, even mm -hmm. in his uh, you know uh, bad branding. That you, you I, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, again, you remember the opinion polls that may have been done. I don't know how credible those opinion polls would be, mm -hmm. uh, but again, they have shown a neck-to-neck -neck, uh, competition between uh, Kidero and Sonko. And so, what one would be looking at is to tilt the scales towards uh, Sonko. It's very interesting. I'm sure, we, of course, I'm waiting to hear Kissinger's view on this. Is yeah. getting ready to join us. Yeah. Uh, but now that the president has, you know literally told Peter Kenneth to back off. Does it mean the rest is now between only two individuals? Going by the opinion polls again? Uh, Peter Kenneth has a choice mm -hmm. to listen uh, to the president's voice mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully step down for Sonko and then wait for the job. Mm -hmm. He has been promised a job publicly by, by the, the presidency. Uh, the other option would be to push on with his campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, if he pushes on with the campaign, as you can see, he's, uh, say, he says he's campaigning for the president, but the president kind of has disowned him. So it's going to be difficult for now Peter Kenneth to convince Nairobians mm -hmm. uh, henceforth uh, that uh, he's uh, backing the president when he actually goes against the presidential call. Uh, many times... Uh, People listen to the president, what he says. So it, it's up to him now to make a decision. There are people who still identify with him, especially among the Jubilee quarters, you know, the middle class people who don't feel like uh, Songo stands for their views. So these are the people maybe Peter Kenneth candidacy might go ahead and attract. Interestingly, Sonko has been able to wither that, mm -hmm. if you look at it clearly, uh, clearly. He has been able to wither that problem of uh, he's seen as a, a candidate for the uh, low cadre people, and then uh, Peter Kenneth is seen as a person for the elites. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, whereas Peter Kenneth has not been able to step down, and he has been working very hard, mm -hmm. he's been moving house to house, uh, village to village, uh, from one uh, slum to another, but that has not completely endeared him because, again, his, uh, uh, the, the, the media attention that he has gained, I think, has not been sufficient enough to help mm -hmm. him to uh, transform that image. So uh, when he has not been able to come out as a candidate for the lower cadre people, Sonko has been able to raise his uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the reasons why Sonko has been able to go that way is because he has not shied off from uh, defending even people who, who look like uh, they are in the upper echelons of of power, and again, or rather, of uh, society. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, also, if you look at the election in 2013, Sonko got majority of the votes in Nairobi, and these votes did not necessarily just come from the people who are the, 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 the lower cadre people. Mm -hmm. He also got votes from people who are in Kilelesho. Actually, if you look at the voting pattern in Nairobi, mm -hmm. his uh, voting, the voting pattern were, were quite encouraging for him. And I think that is what he's basing on mm -hmm. when he has a head on with, with Peter Kenneth. So um, Peter Kenneth would have to either step aside or risk Mm -hmm. losing miserably in this, uh, in this uh, particular election. Mm -hmm. Well, as we await Mr. Kissinger to come through and give us his uh, point of view on this debate, let me just take our viewers back to northern Kenya again. That is where President Uhuru Kenyatta is at this moment addressing his supporters in Mandera. And a while back, he was in Wajir. Let's listen to some of what the leaders had to say uh, while in their tour of Wajir County. Nini ndiyo mutachagua wale ambao munataka, sisi tutafanya kazi na wale watachaguliwa na wanainchi wa wajia. Safari hii, ODM, muifungie mivilago vyao, waende nyumbani. Na nataka ni wakikishie, 
ya kwamba generator mpya italetwa hapa wajia ndio tusuluhishe hiyo shida ya, ya power cuts katika mji huu na ndio watu waweze kuwa na stima ya kufanya biashara zao tutatumia within six months 53 million shillings ambayo italipwa hawa vijana na wakati hawa vijana wanafanya hiyo kazi wale wakina mama ambao watakuwa wanapikia hawa watalipwa milioni tano kwa hiyo kazi ya kupikia vijana wale ambao wanafanya hiyo kazi. All those are pictures we had for you from Jubilee's campaign early this month where the president was promising the people of northern Kenya there nothing short of a development. And today he is in Mandera. What are some of their agendas there as a Jubilee party? That is something that we're going to focus on this afternoon. But for now, let's take a very short break. We'll be right back with much more. Don't go too far. This is KTN News. To call Flex the 